Your faith is going to move mountains. Your faith is going to cause that miraculous realm to come about for you to walk in that miraculous realm. But don't forget, your life of pressing in is a life of prayer. If you're going to walk in the realm of miracles, then you have to be a person of prayer. Our faith must grow to the level of expectancy for what he's already done and wants to continue to do. Don't let the blockage be on your end. When you start walking in miracles, you must take risks. And sometimes when you take risks, you make mistakes. But the only way that you learn how to walk correctly is by getting back up. So how to operate in miracles, and this is talking about mountain moving faith. We're going to see and we're going to speak. What happened today? I saw in the spirit and I spoke. You're going to see and you're going to speak and miracles are going to start abounding in your life. Yeah. Takes a step of faith, right, to do so. The enemy would say, don't say it, don't need to say it. You might be wrong, you're probably wrong, you are wrong. And he is a defeated foe, and he is nothing more than the father of lies. So all he does is lie to you. When you start walking in miracles, you must take risks. And sometimes when you take risks, you make mistakes. But the only way that you learn how to walk correctly is by getting back up. You can see it even just naturally as a child starts to learn how to crawl and then walk. Just get back up, right? Pretty soon they're running. But they wouldn't have done so had they not taken those steps. Amen. So Romans 4.17, God who gives life to the dead and he calls those things which do not exist as though they did. It is God who gives life to the dead, but it is us who need to speak it out because we see with the eyes of the spirit. One of the things that we need to learn to do if you're going to walk in the miraculous realm is to see with the eyes of the spirit. What God says in his word, Romans 4, 17, he's as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life. Say God who gives life. God has given me life. I was once dead, but I am now alive in Christ. And that life that I live in Christ, I live fully in him. So, so if you live that life fully in Christ, is there any lack in you? No, it, because Christ is in you fully, right? So is there any limitation in you? No, because Christ fully lives in you, right? So Jesus did all kinds of work, all kinds of kingdom work, all kinds of miracles, right? But his spirit lives on the inside of us. So should there be any lack in us when it comes to the realm of the miraculous? Mm -mm. It's only what we settle for, right? It's only what we settle for. And so my desire is that your appetite becomes more and more wet, more and more hungry, for the miraculous, not in a weird, kooky way, grounded in the faith of God's word, not in a crazy, radical way. I mean, it is all crazy and radical, but it must be grounded in the word of God. Yeah. It must be grounded in his Bible. And you know that we're always very careful to make sure everything is backed up by his word because people do, they get off. And, and, but that shouldn't be the reason that you shouldn't walk in this or want to walk in this. We already have the perfect example, Christ. He, we already know what's possible and what's available to us. Amen? So the Bible says in 1 Timothy 1.18, he says that we are to wage a good warfare. Now, why would he say we need to wage a good warfare? You know, obviously, the, uh, we laugh because, because we know that the enemy always wants to stop, and he will do so in fear, doubt, frustration, offense, all kinds of things, right? He'll, he'll, he'll throw all kinds of things. But listen to what he says here in 1 Timothy 1.18. He says, this command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies you previously made concerning you. There are prophecies that have been previously made concerning you. Now, these proph prophecies, a lot of them have already been spoken from the word of God. He sent forth his word and he healed them of all of their diseases. They've been sent forth. Jesus was sent and he healed. He says, by my stripes, by his stripes, you are healed. He says, we are to walk in our high calling. We are to walk as ambassadors of the Lord. We already have a whole Bible full of prophecies. And so what he is saying here, he says, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by those prophecies, you may wage that good warfare. 
Now, some of those prophecies are not necessarily from the written word, but there are prophecies that have been spoken to you, whether it be directly from the spirit of the living God or through another individual that has spoken and it bore witness, and you know that you know it is of God. It's a specific word. Even let's just say, for example, the two words that I had this morning, right? It's biblical. I mean, you're not going to find chapter and verse on it, but it's biblical, right? And so you receive those prophecies, and, God, and when you receive it, you have to wage a good warfare. You must wage a good warfare if you're going to walk in the miracle of seeing it be fulfilled. Just because there's a word that's spoken doesn't mean it's just going to come to pass without any effort on your part. The miracle is in your persistent pursuing Christ for that word. There is a miracle at hand, many of them. There are miracles at hand, right? There are so many miracles. If Christ, oh, Jesus, okay, because he's right here with us, right, the all-consuming fire the king of kings and the lord of lords he's with us he's present right he is the king of glory he is the god of all miracles if he and he is since he is here with us right and he is the miraculous one what is it that you don't have that you're not seeing or walking in and why i want you to see what's available what don't you have and why? Because it's available for you to have it. It is available for you to have it. But what needs to shift is a level of faith and expectancy that if Christ, and we know he is, is fully with me at all times, and if Christ, and he did, raise the dead, parted the sea, calmed the storm, if Christ could go and multiply the food with just a small lunch, if, and all these things that came to pass, if, then why am I walking in less than? Because it's not on his part. So our faith must grow to the level of expectancy for what he's already done and wants to continue to do. That's why I said faith is our foundation, our foundation in Christ. What the enemy wants to do is blind you, and this is how he does. This is one of his ways. Tells you that you're satisfied and you're good. I'm good. I'm good. You got used to life the way it is. I'm good. No, no, you've settled. There's no compromise. There's no settling when God wants to give you more. If you want to walk in the miraculous, you have to always allow God to stretch you. You have to be one that says, Lord, I, I want to be stretched. I do not want to get comfortable. When we get comfortable because you think you've got something, that's, that's when the miracles stop. You want to see miracles? Get used to being uncomfortable. So we're going to wage a good warfare. We're going to wage a good warfare. Lord, you said it's mine. Lord, you already said it's mine. I'm hanging on to it. Lord, you said I'm going to write. I thank you, Lord God. I don't know what I'm going to write about. I don't even think I can write. But it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what you say, right? For that word that I just gave, right? Lord, you said, okay, I received it. It bore witness. I am an author. I am who you say I am. You guys remember, at least most of you probably remember uh, my story of when the Lord said to me years ago, before I wrote my first book, and he said, you are an author, right? This is many years ago now. I wasn't even in ministry yet. I was not in... You know, I, you know, just raising my kids, and uh, he says, you are an author. And immediately I said, I'm not an author, Lord. I can't write. I can't write. And right away, I mean right away, I knew enough to know this. You don't tell God no. So I said, oh, Lord, forgive me. I repent. I am who you say I am. So I knew it was just a quick you know, prayer, super fast, right? Just, okay, Lord, I am who you say I am. But I'm going to keep this a secret for now. <laughs> no, I don't want to tell anybody what I just heard. Um, because I, my confidence wasn't where it needed to be yet, that God actually could do what he said he was going to do. And also that there still needed to be some healing because I thought I needed to do it. You don't need to do it. You just need to come into agreement. Just come into agreement and let him do it through you. But I had to learn that still. And so, yeah, so... Then he had me write, and he had me write my first book, and then the second, and then the third, and then I know there's many, many more books coming, but I had to come into agreement with what God said, and he said, you are an author. Nothing in the natural would have shown that, nothing, 
But when God says something and you say, okay, I'm now I'm going to do battle with the word. And I would. I would do battle with that prophecy that God spoke to me even before I told another living being. Eventually, I told my husband. Eventually, I started telling people as my faith would grow. And, and, uh, and that's okay. Because you know what? God is good. He's, he, he's okay with that. Just don't say no to him. Amen? Because we don't want to limit ourselves at all. So you wage a good warfare with the word. James 5, 16. Uh, effectual. A fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous man availeth much. If you're going to walk in the realm of miracles, then you have to be a person of prayer. Like a lot. Like consistently be walking in prayer. If you're going to be a person of, of miracles, then you know the effectual pr prayer means the energetic prayer. Means it's the energy. And I don't mean like energy. Oh, I got to do. I got to shout. I got to. And I got to make my voice be loud. No. Now, if that's how it's going to come about, praise God. That's how God is moving through you at that moment. Wonderful. That's great. Uh, but the energetic prayer isn't necessarily the volume or the energy, the strength coming out. But it is uh, allowing the spirit of God, who is the energy, the power, to move through you. You might be on your face, uh, and it just might be liquid prayers coming, form in the, coming forth in the form of tears. Uh, but that is the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man that's availing much we all following so walking in the realm of miracles is a man or a woman of God that walks in prayer fully look at Matthew 21 22 whatever you ask in prayer believing you will receive it if you have faith Matthew 21 and we're going to start in 18 this is now in the morning as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it, and he found nothing on it but leaves. And he said, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Are you speaking forth commands that come from the Spirit of God that are literally saying, never again in my lifetime will this happen. Stop. And the voice of authority literally shuts down the demonic. Is that a miracle? Mm -hmm. Let no fruit grow on you ever again. And immediately... The fig tree withered away. Verse 20. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled. How did the fig tree wither away so soon? Speak it. Decree it. Not just in yourself. Please don't do it in yourself, your flesh. In the spirit. Letting the Holy Spirit speak through you because you are walking with him. You're in tune with him. Jesus said to them, assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, uh, you will not only do what was done to this fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. Amen. And whatever things you ask for in prayer, in prayer, believing, we must be believing in prayer, you will receive, only do not have doubt. One of the things that kills and stops the move of the spirit walking in the miraculous is doubt. The enemy will definitely try to cause you to doubt, but you have authority over doubt. The minute that you recognize doubt is at work, cast it out. Cast out doubt. You will not walk in the miraculous because let me tell you, you think that you've got all kinds of stuff coming against you. You start stepping out in greater things. You start walking in the miracles. You're going to see how many more demons uh, tried to come against you because they don't want you to walk in the fullness of Christ. But you're called to. You're called to. But your faith level will rise to a level that you didn't have before. You didn't know it was possible. You don't know what you don't know. But once you know, you know. And then you walk in it, right? It's true. When you don't know something, you literally don't have the ability to have understanding in that area. But as things become clearer, now you have revelation. Now you have understanding. And now you have a responsibility to carry it out. Right? And so you bind those things and say, oh, no way. The thing is you have to make sure your emotions don't have more of a hold on you than the truth. That's the tricky part. Because sometimes our emotions are so loud uh, and they take center stage. Uh, and that just means there's more work that needs to be done within us so that we literally walk by the spirit and not by our emotion, by our soul. Let your spirit rise up. Let your soul go down. It's a prayer you should be praying all the time. Let your soul go down, spirit rise up, and attach to the Holy Spirit. And in this manner, you're going to walk in greater miracles. It's not you. It's Christ in you. Amen. And so another point about unbelief, Matthew 13, 
and 58. Matthew 13, 58. Jesus did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. And Jesus was fully God. And it's not that, I mean, come on, couldn't he just say, well, in spite of all of that, I'm still going to work these miraculous miracles? Of course he could, and he's done that. But as an example to us, we see times in the Word of God where it says that he couldn't do many mighty miracles because of their unbelief, not because he wasn't fully God, because he was, not because he was not capable, because he certainly was capable, but as an example to us, there are times when unbelief is right there, and the, you could like open that person's mouth, you can shove the food in their mouth, but you can't make them chew on it, nor can you make them swallow it. So sometimes there's unbelief there. And that unbelief will limit what they can receive. Oh, it's not going to limit what you can give out, but it'll just limit what they can receive. Are we following? Now, you're not responsible for what other people receive. You're only responsible for what you give out. You're responsible for giving out the fullness. You're responsible for literally not withholding anything. Does Christ withhold anything from us? So we are also to freely give because it's been freely given. Amen? Amen. Miracles are not just healing uh, it's not just healing and, and just and deliverance. Those are great, needed, important, and part of, of miracles. But it's not just that. Miracle, anything, anything beyond your scope, your ability to change and make it happen is a miracle. Anything, anything at all. A relationship being restored is a miracle. A hardness of heart, you know, um, a father-son, you know, that are just at odds with one another. You know, hatred and the hearts that change and are softened now and have been reconciled, that's a miracle. Right? There are so many miracles. Financial freedom, where there was like debt and lack and, you know, credit cards, and that is a miracle. God wants you to walk in everything that He has given us. Not one thing shall be lacking, not one thing shall be missing. So Jesus had the power. Verse Matthew 13, 58. Jesus had the power and He was willing. But He didn't perform many miracles there. But He had the power and He was willing. He wanted to. He was willing. He wanted to, but he didn't. Don't let that be you. Don't be the person that understands that Jesus has the power and he's willing, but you're blocking him from moving. And then also know that when you're moving in signs and wonders and you're just not seeing, you, you can see the resistance. Jesus had the power. And Jesus was willing, but he didn't move in many signs and wonders at that certain place because they had unbelief. Nevertheless, you're only responsible for giving out the fullness. Don't let the blockage be on your, right? Don't let any kind of hindering spirit be on your side. Mark 5, 34, one of my favorite stories in the New Testament and it was the woman with the issue of blood, 12 years infir of, of infirmity. You know, it was her faith that healed her. Your faith can heal you. Having faith in the word of God, having faith in what he's already spoken, can and should heal you. So in this story, this woman had spent all that she had. She exhausted everything. She went to all the physicians. She spent everything that she had on these physicians, and she was no better for it. So she was desperate. 12 years with this infirmity, 12 years, that's a long time to be the outcast, to be the person that has to always stay away because of the curse of having this infirmity upon her life. But one day she heard that Jesus was in town, and, and she came behind him, and you know she there was a ton of people, crowded, but she pressed in and she touched the hem of his garment. She came and she pressed in and she knew that she knew she was desperate. She already exhausted every other option. Why do we not come to worship with the same kind of desperation and tenacity? Because we should. I think a lot of us do anyway, but, but I'm always trying to entice you to more pressing into more, coming to a place. Who was she reaching out to touch but Jesus? Who are we reaching out to touch when we come into worship but Jesus, right? And when we touch the hem of his garment, it's because we have literally touched his heart. We have touched his heart. 
When you're praying, you're touching his heart. When you're worshiping, you're touching his heart. When you're literally coming before him and saying, I love you. Do you know what our prayer life should look like? It's just a complete love affair with Jesus. And that is touching his heart. And that's your foundation. And then what happens? You realize you get out of yourself. Self disappears. Holy Spirit fully fills. You walk differently. This woman reached out and touched her faith. She knew that she knew that she knew. Nothing else worked. She knew that she knew. If only. If only I could just reach out and touch the hem of his garment. But we have access. It's not if only because Jesus is not physically walking here. We have access every day, every moment of the day to reach out and touch him. And we do so in our life by praying, by literally walking as one with him. Koinonia, that friendship with him. Well, you know, she reached out, she touched the hem of his garment. And you know that Jesus said, who touched me? Turned around and said, who touched me? Because there was a crowd of people, and they were all pressing in. And his disciples said, what are you talking about, Jesus? Everybody is touching you. Everybody is pressing into you. How could you say this? Not everybody's pressing in is the same. Somebody, some press in, but there's still too much of self, self-promotion, self-exaltation, self, you know, religious spirits. There's too much of self for some. Jesus knows that one that comes or the few that come and they're so hungry whether they be broken whether they just they're just they're ready they're emotionally physically spiritually they're ready none of them all of you jesus they're ready and that touch touches him physically touches him and he felt and he could feel power leaving out of him and when he felt power he said who touched me I don't care about all the other people that are touching me. Don't touch Jesus in the flesh. We're not going to touch Jesus in the flesh. We're going to touch him in the spirit. We're going to touch him with our spirit, with our spirit man. Right? Okay, so, so power left. And he turned. And she said, it was me. He said, who did that? Who touched me? And she's like, it, it was me. It, it was me. And he said, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Your faith is going to move mountains. Your faith is going to cause that miraculous realm to come about for you to walk in that miraculous realm. But don't forget, your life of pressing in is a life of prayer. None of this happens without your foundation being the faith in Christ and your life being a life of prayer. When That's what that's symbolic of, touching, reaching out, touching him. It's a life of prayer. Father, teach us how to pray 24-7. Father, teach us to be people that walk on the foundation of your word. Father, teach us. Amen? Because there there's always more, church. Always. God always wants to teach us and bring us into more. So your faith has made you well. Matthew 15. And this is a story of a, a mother. Her faith healed somebody else that was not even present. This Canaanite woman had a demon-possessed daughter. This is Matthew 15. You know, we're here and not all of our loved ones are here that we're praying for, are they? No, they're not. But yet this woman had faith, this Canaanite woman had faith that her demon-possessed daughter would be healed, and she was. So let's, let's look at this story here, Matthew 15 and 28. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up, though, a little bit. Verse 22, behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. Oh, sometimes you pray and you go, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. You need to wage a good warfare with the word. It doesn't matter if you hear something or not. Wage a good warfare with the word. You've already heard a thousand and one words. So my daughter is severely demon-possessed, but he answered her not a word. God is seeing if you're going to stay close and if you really, really, really want what's available for you. So his disciples came and urged him, and he said, send her away. She cries out after us. Get rid of her. But he answered, and he said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
This woman would not take no for an answer. <laughs> we cannot take no. Not that God was saying no, but at the same time, there was some resistance there. And so he said, she came and she worshiped him. Worship is your access to the miraculous church. In one sentence, worship is access to the miracles in your life. Worship Jesus. Just worship him and watch him move. Amen. So she came and she worshiped him and she said, Lord, help me. Your prayer is a worship unto him. Lord, help me. But he answered and he said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Now, some might have walked away and gotten offended. But she said, yes, Lord. Yet, even so, she said, even so, I hear you, Lord. But even the little dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. He's saying, Lord, I get it. I see it. But, Lord, I just want a little bit. Even a crumb. I'd be happy with even just a crumb. Now, now we know that's not the heart of God. But in explaining this story and this Canaanite woman and what she knew of, right? Even though she was not even a follower of Christ, had enough tenacity. Well, maybe because she had to live with a demonized daughter. And maybe she had been at her wits end. And maybe she just would not. She's, no, oh, I've seen other people get healed. I've seen what happens when they get around you, Jesus. And I am not willing to go back home the same way I came here. That kind of faith. That kind of, this woman, though she was not really yet a believer, still had the kind of faith that would cause her to be one. So she pressed in. Right? And then Jesus answers. And he says to her, oh, woman, great is your faith. He said, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Her daughter that had been demon possessed that was not present while she pressed into Jesus. Her daughter was healed from that very hour. You that are here pressing into the heart of God, though your loved ones may not be present, your heart pressing into his heart is literally causing healing to those not present. Miracles are abounding in your life because you're just pressing in. You're touching his hem, the hem of his garment. You're not taking no, or what you think is no, for an answer. God doesn't say no. He says yes, but he will let you, he, he will test. He, do you really believe me? Do you have faith? And when he sees, you're not going to turn around and quit. This is not for the faint of heart. I tell you this all the time. When he sees that you're going to persist and say, Lord, I will never, ever Go the other way. I would never change my mind. I am yours fully, completely, no matter what. When he sees a sold out radical Christian in spite of the opposition, in spite of the trouble, and says, you know what, Lord, I'm going to walk in everything you've called me to walk in. Miracles, yes, they're mine. Absolutely. I am to walk in the miraculous realm. You are to walk in the miraculous realm, every one of you. And so you're going to press in and say, Lord, I'm going to touch the hem of your garment. And I thank you, Lord God. It is faith, my faith that will heal me. My faith, your faith that will heal others absolutely amen and your foundation is fully on the word of God